Welcome back, folks. Take a look over here. We're at TFNN.com. Of course, we have our front page and the featured content, but come over here to the newsletters tab. And if it loads for you quickly, we have something right down at the bottom here. This is the Tiger Forex Report by Teddy Kekstad. Now, this is released every Monday morning. It is great. If you're trying to get into Forex, if you're trying to get into, uh, let's just even say, currency pairings, whatever it is, this is the one for you. He goes over certain commodities as well. And I want to say, too, if you run over to that services tab, we have two options for you. This is capitalized on time with calendar stock option spreads by Teddy Kickstat. Very informative. And if you're just getting into trading or you're just not really sure what the heck a Japanese candlestick pattern is, which, you know, so many traders use and is honestly pretty fundamental in trading, this is the webinar for you. We are, I mean, it's 79 or 97 bucks, guys. Like, this is a great deal for you. Uh, Teddy comes on every Thursday to the morning market kickoff, and we love hearing from him. Teddy, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Yes, sunny day in Chicagoland. There you go. I think we got some of your weather because it's a little bit cloudy and windy, so <laughs> not so bad here. So, well, Teddy, okay, so we have CPI come out. Obviously, some to talk about that. It was not as bad as, I guess, people were anticipating, but we're still well below uh, 2% level uh, on a yearly, so that's something to look at. Oil is kind of coming back down, crude oil, we're at 76.95 right now, and then you have OPEC voting on what they're going to do in June. Uh, I'm curious to hear kind of what your insights on this are. Okay, well, CPI came out as, as expected. Um, I think it's kind of a ridiculous number. I, I personally think it's higher because everything I see continuing at the stores and what have you is going up, not down. Sure. Um, maybe eggs are a little bit cheaper than they were a few months ago, but okay, so <laughs> great. It's 50 cents less a dozen, you know, big deal, you know. Um, yeah. But uh, as far as uh, crude and OPEC, uh, what kind of decision are they going to make? I, I think that in lieu of what's going on in the world right now, um, they're probably going to be very stable and uh, favorable towards the market. I don't think they're going to be restrictive. I would find I'd be very surprised if they become very restrictive. Um, if, if they do, we'll deal with it when that happens. Obviously, if, the, if that should occur, that would be a super bullish fundamental for the crude oil market. Um, so yeah. uh, right now, I would say you know it's it's on. It's trading some very nice support. I mean, it didn't make a lower low yet today. I mean, we had the low, what was it, last week. We're hovering above that right now, but we're grinding. I mean, we're hanging in, our, in a downside support zone where we've been basically going sideways. So I, I don't think there's too much room to the downside. I mean, I, I hope oil breaks $20, to be quite honest with you, but in trading, there's no wishing, hoping, or praying. So if I'm saying I'm hoping, I know it's not going to happen, you know, so I, I'm still in a buy break situation. I would say to the downside, we could probably still get down into that $75 area. Mm -hmm. I think 75 half is pretty much going to be the floor. 75 may be the extreme. I, I don't see it getting below that. The only way I could see that would be happening is if you had some kind of fundamental of supply increasing, right. um, we're, we're, which I don't see that happening, especially because now we're heading into the summertime, mm -hmm. you know, rollover of, of the of this of how they refine. The, uh, gas and you know oil in the country to begin with here and abroad. So and then we also have the June roll. You know, uh, oil is one of the uh, commodity contracts that has an expiration every single month. You know, so yes. and I would be very careful with the way the spreads between the May and June contracts go in towards expiration, especially with between the options and futures, because we're coming when we come into that area of the end of the quarter as well as. Um, financial and commodity expirations, the spreads typically tend to move a lot, which means now for people who don't understand spreads and, and commodity contracts and expirations, um, I'm not going to make it really difficult for you. But as far as the pricing mechanism is concerned, that should keep it pretty stable right now. There's no reason for any long term. Um, heavy bullishness, if you will, you know, so unless right. you see that those spreads start to all of a sudden expand over the next week or so, you know, or especially going into uh, uh, the beginning of June, in that case, then I would say that we're probably going to see a, um, a bottoming for sure in crude and then see, I would expect a big rally. Until then, I think you're going to chop around where you're at. 
if we touch down to 75, I don't see us hanging there for very long. I see us more about pretty much where we're at now, around 77 to $80, hanging in that range at least for the next week or so still. So it's going to be a tough trade. I, I would be, yeah. wait, I would wait for a signal that you, if you want to buy this market, wait for a solid buy signal. And as far as selling it, I'd be very, very cautious right now as far as being a seller. I'd be very nimble and I wouldn't want to keep your expectations very tight. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is something I'm, I'm trying to look to get into as well, right? I'll use some kind of like leveraged ETF for it, but I'm seeing it out here. Obviously, the fundamentals are at work as well. Again, we've spoken about Mexico, you know, decreasing their exports of it, although that's not such a major portion, um, but then also summertime. So it's actually kind of surprising to me that maybe we're this low, but... Um, you know, still learning a lot about crude oil as well. And Anyways. that's why I think it's going to spike if it continues to go right. lower. I, I would not get married to a short down there. I'd be careful selling it in the hole, you yeah. know, and getting caught. You Big know? time. Big time. Well, the other question I have for you is, well, obviously we've spoken about yen, I think, the past two times. But Bank of America came out and said, and this is what they said, it would take uh, global risk for U.S. to step into buoy yen. So the sell, okay. they said the sell-off in Japanese currency this year sent the yen breach $160. And Bank of America said this is actually like super undervalued by any reasonable measure. So I'm curious to hear kind of what you think their point in doing this is and then what the win side is for Bank of America if they decide to do something like this. Okay, you know, I, I've only read it, read a little bit about what you're talking about, so I don't know all of the details as far as what they may or may not sure. be doing with this. Um, I think that when it comes to a bank talking about something like that, um, no one moves the market or controls the market. Even the Federal Reserve and central banks don't. They're only fundamental influences for a moment. And whenever banks start talking about that kind of a trade, if you will, um, I would get really worried on whatever they're doing, and I would I would take the other side. <laughs> no kidding. Seriously, no. Seriously, yeah. I would take the other side. Huh. Absolutely, because odds are. The past performance is pretty much proof in the pudding when it comes to banks that are 100% wrong. No kidding. <laughs> Interesting insight. Things. Yeah, it's yeah. 100 percent wrong when it comes to that stuff, without a doubt. That's not how they make their money. They're, that's and that's how they lose money. Always, 100 percent of the time. So I would definitely, I would definitely take the other side of their trade. Yeah, it was just it was interesting to me because obviously, you know, we've been going over it when you've come on the show as well. So seeing that, I was like, OK, this is adding a little bit more fuel in this fire. Yeah, uh, if, you have to sell, if, the, if you have to sell to the public what you're doing as far as <laughs> trading. <laughs> yeah. I, once again, no wishing, no hoping, no praying. You're, you're trying to you're trying to have extra influence on people with and tell them what you're doing. Get, get out of here. That's there. Either that's not what they're really doing or for sure they're wrong. It's yeah. One of the two. No and kidding. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely, I'm going to look some more into this as well, because I'm just curious, of, again, you know, why they want to get in this and uh, what their kind of end point is. And then finally, I guess we can talk a little bit, if you want to, just the dollar in general, right? Looking at the DXY, sure. we've moved down a little bit. We were hovering, we we're honestly kind of moving sideways in that 105 area. Well, we cracked mm -hmm. below 105, we're at 104.76. Mm -hmm. Kind of thinking, what are you looking at long term? Is this higher level going to be maintained? Um, are we going to get back to this 105? What do you kind of see in short term in the dollar? Well, with the dollar index, you know, we've been trading lower for the past month. Um, we just today, we made a newer low. Um, we took out the low from a week and a half ago. And I think I'd be very careful. We're, we're finding, we're looking for support. I think 103 is probably the bottom of it. Right on. And then we'll see a bounce. Teddy, thank you so much for coming on with us. Again, we're going to work on something, getting a webinar out for you folks. If you want to see this interview again, you can check it out on our YouTube. Like and subscribe. Teddy, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.